Hello, everybody. I'm Joe McGovern, awards reporter here at The Wrap. We are so happy to have you here for our 2021 Awards and International Screening Series. And today we are excited to bring you Agnes Joy, which is Iceland's best international feature film entry this year. We're going to show you the trailer of the movie first, and then we'll go right into a conversation with writer-director Celia Herkstadter and the two actresses in the film, Katla Torgesdottir and Donna Cruz. Uh, to our audience, please participate in the live chat of the stream and share your thoughts about the film and really do let us know where you're all tuning in from. And now here's the trailer for Agnes Joy. Ja, hún segir að ég ætli ekki að gera það. Það er bara ekki átt að koma heim sex í morgun. Þú vissir alveg að vera í ættum út í dag. Hræði mig eftir að sjá hvernig þessar ungu konur leifa sér að vera svona áðmyndar speiki. Já, já. Finnur ekki fyrir geðsveiflum, þingslum í skafi. Nei, 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 nei og nei. Því bara ég er undir álegi og segir illa punktur. Gengur ekki samlífi hjá okkur hjónunum vel að mér? Jú, það gengur mjög vel hjá mér og mann. Þetta er kona mín, Rannveig. Sæl veistu, reytnendi ég. Hæ, þeir leiða þetta húsið hérna við hlið. Heyrðu það má ekki bjóða í grillu eftir? Hvernig við koma? Hvað ætlar að verða hérna lengi? Ég er framöndi bakka, sko. Nó, mín bara farin að drekka heima. Hvað er peysa? Takk fyrir að bjóða mér. Alveg frábæra mót ykkur hérna. Heyrðu, getur þú hjálpað mér mig? Hvað er það? Ég læta... Ég læta nú ekki hafa áhrif á mig. Ég stappa. En já, já, ég með Fagur lim. Þú verður að muna eftir því að næra þig. Æ, mamma, please. Ég meni ekki, Agnes, ég treysti þér. Það fyrir ekki að ég treysti öllum öðrum. Treystirðu mér? Já. Nei. Hvað er eiginlega af þér, Agnes? Já. Einar, okkur getur ekki bara hjálpað mér og staði með mér í þessu. Standa með þér í hverju? Úr tómum helvítis leiðendum alla daga. Heyr eru því sjálfri þér hann með. Kannski segir draum að prinsinn Welcome back. It's my, my pleasure now to introduce writer-director Celia Herkstadter and actresses Katla Torgesdottir and Donna Cruz. Hi. Hi, hi everybody. Hi, hi. hi. Good afternoon. Good evening. Um, where are you all calling in from? Are you are you in Iceland? Yes. Reykjavik. Yes. All in Reykjavik. Um, yeah. Yeah, I want to ask a lot about the about certainly the country and of course this town where the film takes place, which is not Reykjavik actually, which kind of is a is a plot point a bit in the film. But first, just to get some um, some background on all of you, and to talk about you know working um, in cinema uh, and television um, in in Iceland, and maybe um, Celia to to begin, you've made. Uh, other features, you've made documentaries, you've worked in TV. Um, can you describe maybe, uh, just give us a sort of a sketch of your of your career and then we'd love to know how it all led to this film. Um, yeah, like you say, I've been, I've been for the last, whoa, 20 years, I've been working <laughs> in this uh, business, um, directing mainly and writing so i like to to write or co-write on on uh, projects that i direct um yeah now it's since agnes i was i've been doing like shooting a series a drama series that's with a suspense kind of element to it and yeah um i think like when I look back on my career so far, it's all 
been related to somehow um it's very i think uh, coming of age stories is a thread that i see and uh, um i also see like more clearly as i grow older i see also just uh, the themes are you know a lot doing with uh, shame and guilt and mm. um come to terms with who you are finding out um yeah self-realization somehow yes i mean all things that we're going to talk about for this film um also i i thought it was a fun detail that a few years ago when uh, christopher nolan came to iceland to make um interstellar i guess he was using iceland as a some kind of a planet elsewhere in the universe um, you were involved with that production. Oh yeah, um, along with uh, a huge army of Icelandic film crew. Uh, <laughs> but it was a, it was a, yeah, it was an adventure. We are lucky uh, with having, you know, every now and then we have like big productions that you know come for the scenery and uh, the nature. So we yeah. get to, we get to uh, participate. Yes, um, Donna, this. Uh, is this your first um, big role in a in a movie? Uh, yes, it is actually. <laughs> so I've I've done a couple of sketches and like um, social like social media like internet shows. Uh, I've been in a couple of commercials, but this is actually like my first acting role, and like a very good one. Good, good. It's a very good first. Very. Um, tell, what, what was the process like? How did you uh, get involved? Um, <laughs> so um, one of the casting directors messaged me on Facebook and was uh, asked me if I could come in for an audition. And I didn't think much of it. I actually thought it wasn't like legit at first. I thought it was maybe not a joke, but I didn't think that much of it. And then I said, yeah, yeah, I mean, I can come. And I figured it was maybe just for like a small part. And then um, I met the casting director with um, Katla and and Celia, and it turned out to be one of the lead roles, which was kind of, <laughs> which, yeah, really surprised me. Um, Katla, t tell us uh, about your, some, some of your work um, in, TV uh, and in films, um, you know, thus far, uh, it's such a great performance in this film. I really got to say that. And I'd love to know how this performance, this film fits within your greater career. Yeah, well, uh, this is my first big role in a movie, I have to say. And uh, I was, uh, when I went to the audition, you know, I was just captivated by the script. I, I mean, it's so good. I think it's so honest and uh, you can relate to so many things. So this is my first big role and I really enjoyed it. But mostly I have been working in the theater for the last 20 years. So that has been my career mostly. Wow. Mm. Um, Celia, can you talk about the script? Uh, what, you know, what changed from your writing of it uh, through the process of casting, I mean, how much did these two women uh, affect the, the the screenplay? Um, I think, um, like we we spent, we gave the the development of the script quite a lot of time. Uh, so we we me and my co-writers we had the opportunity to also grow with it a bit. So uh, it was kind of a, a long process, um, us all coming to like uh, growing up with the main character somehow. Uh, but then when it came to uh, like pre-production, when we had those two lovely ladies on board, Katla and Donna, uh, they somehow, uh, it kind of just went into sync somehow, I think. Um, both of them, like they communicated very clearly uh, to each other and the three of us somehow. So um, I'm not sure it changed a lot, but they somehow, you know, they just like uh, filled in um, 
with their comments, they had comments, of course, uh, and we had an um, honest and good dialogue about the script. And uh, but yeah, my feeling is it just like it was the the final step somehow, like making them come to life, which which is totally what they, you know, uh, did, you know, on on their own terms somehow. Yeah. I want to say it's, uh, I think you can tell from the trailer, which gives a really pretty good sketch of the film. Um, it's a, it's a very real film. It's, it's, it's a very honest film, but it's also very funny um, in a lot of ways, very human um, and, and kind of raw. Uh, you know, we actually see a little bit of it in the trailer. The first shot of the movie is um, of Donna as, as Agnes in the toilet. Um, now, uh, 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 being sick uh, from a, basically hang uh, a hangover, um, Donna. Can you maybe talk about the the uh, the, the the realness, you know, um, and the honesty, knowing that that's how the film was going to start. That's kind of setting the the stage for for a uh, a pretty real experience. Uh, just throughout the whole process of, of yeah. filming, or. Well, maybe just like knowing uh, I that mean, yeah. it was going to begin. Yeah, um, I like. I kind of just trusted it. Like, I, I don't have a lot of experience when it comes on being on set and acting, and and it was every everything was just so surreal for me, and I was just excited excited for being there and being a part of this beautiful project. So I was just kind of enjoying it. And I didn't ask, ask too much question on like how it was going to turn out. I just kind of trusted it. Um, Celia, do you want to talk a little bit about that? About the yeah, um, uh, the, 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 approach, the honest approach to these these women's lives. Yeah, I'm happy that you you like the word raw that you used uh, is something definitely that was uh, quite in the middle of. Uh, what I was thinking in regards to, you know, filming it. And um, the process uh, was also drawing out, like finding this core in the center, which is the relationship of the mother and the daughter and how, um, how that relationship is somehow like uh, something she needs, like the mother, Katla's character needs to um, somehow unpack in order to um, uh, sit with herself somehow. Uh, the script was written. Uh, this wasn't the first scene uh, of the film. Uh, we, in this, in the in the script, there was uh, we had uh, like a long kind of uh, sequence where it was, um, you know. But and then we in editing phase, we 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 changed it. So uh, also because we just wanted to to uh, put the straight the energy into showing how different at this point uh the mother and the daughter were and i mean how how this could uh, somehow just show uh the the very different places they were in uh and you know it's just the struggle of uh the mother thinking like uh, her like she is just so frustrated with her daughter not being what she wants her to be right. and um the process of uh, the project in in front of her is come to terms with that she just like has to let go in order to actually connect with her and herself so um you know i i think maybe it's uh, yeah it's just that the the good old the the more we we judge the people that are close to us it's it's quite a lot telling about how we're thinking towards ourselves so um that's her process, I think, uh, letting go of those judgments uh, and as the process come to terms with herself a bit more. For sure. I think that, you know, it's a, it's sort of a, it's a coming of age for both characters. Um, there's a really nice moment that's, uh, I love when films include these little sort of grace notes that you see almost in the, in the corners when, um, when Katla, when you were in a, with, uh, with Donna in the, dressing room i think or of a, of a clothing store and yeah. you catch you catch a little sight of yourself in the mirror and yeah you're, you're sort of leaning over and suddenly you straighten up and you kind of uh, cross your legs um lovely little details uh like that um but tell me about sort of you know 
this is a character sort of rediscovering herself. How how is that process like for you as a as, as an actor? Well, I really enjoyed it, and like I said before, I connected a lot. Of course, she's uh, I'm at the same age, and uh, I have children and a husband, and you know, so uh, it was quite. Uh, easy to begin with. And of course, uh, we must remember that Celia, she's a very good one director and she helped me a lot. So uh, working with Ranve, the character I played, we were just focusing on this uh, honest energy. And uh, yes, yeah, she's very dysfunctional, of course. I mean, her mother is very dominating, so it runs in the family. And um, the, the codependency takes mm. a lot of space, you know. She's trying to figure it out with her mother, who is getting old and, uh, and is afraid, of course. Uh, and then uh, this relationship to her daughter, which is very complicated. So uh, I found it very uh, inspiring to uh, watch in the mirror and take a look at myself and my reactions, of course. And then uh, taking the dialogue with Celia, how we were going to, yeah, do it with this lovely character, Randvig. It's also a very, a very frank, uh, a very honest film about sexuality. Yeah, it is. You yeah. don't often see it necessarily mm -hmm. in, in films. Um, how, uh, I'm almost embarrassed to ask too many questions, but how, how mm -hmm. challenging was that for you um, to to match the film's honesty um, on, on those issues. Yeah, uh, we talked about it too, me and Celia, because you know there were scenes I was afraid of doing, of course, <laughs> <laughs> quite honestly, uh, like being naked and uh, uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. There are two, two or three <laughs> scenes that are <laughs> quite personal. <laughs> Uh, we don't want to spoil, please. <laughs> I'm not going to spoil anything, but uh, uh, of course, it's just uh, we talked about frames, <laughs> how it was going to look, and also just, uh, yeah, it was at the end, it was no problem at all. You know, it's more in your mind when you're thinking about it in your head. And then when you are out on set with all the people, uh, and it's such a nice atmosphere, then it's like no problem at all, I have to say. Yeah. But it's mm. also interesting because both of them, uh, both characters are dealing with uh, kind of, um, I don't know, uh, finding out stuff about their rela relationship with their own sexuality. And they somehow have a, a very different relationship with it, and but both kind of exploring a lot. So. I think it's super important that, that both of them uh, have that kind of um, opportunity to to see where they're at in uh, in regards to their relationship with you know sexuality and Ranve is like uh, you know she's like kind of uh, exploring it in very different ways with her husband uh, with herself uh, mm -hmm. with her and outside the family uh, like what, where's my place in this and how do I feel and and her daughter is doing uh, maybe the same thing, uh, you know, with in a different manner. So I think it's super important uh, to topic in, in both of their journeys somehow is 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 the relationship with sex and sexuality and their own kind of feelings. Yeah, and there's a there's a um, supporting character of a sort of a neighbor, an actor actually. Who becomes sort of a catalyst? He's not really a bad guy, but he becomes a a, a, a trigger for um, other action to take place. And and Donna, I wanted to ask just to sort of I'll, I'll be vague about it, but to flash forward a bit uh, to the about two thirds of the way through the film, there's a great shot where Celia has the camera sort of right on the front of your bike, and and we see your face as your yeah. You're cycling, I get like a double dolly shot kind of. Yeah. And there's no dialogue in that scene, but we're we're given all the information through your face. Um, tell me about shooting that, uh, preparing for that, talking to Celia about that. Um, well, we talked about like 
what would she be feeling in that moment? I mean, she just, she does something that's, that's pretty, um, like, um, just going outside of her box. And, and then what happens is all of a sudden, that's a part of her that her mother doesn't control her. And like she's going her own way. And then after that, uh, after, after that night, she just goes home and she's just kind of happy because she's, she's in control and it's, 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 yeah, it's blissful. She's not, she's not in that, um, like squared environment anymore because she's kind of, she's actually just free, like from everything. Mm. I think, and that's what I wanted to, uh, when we're, it was actually pretty cold, <laughs> but we, <laughs> it was actually really cold. But <laughs> what I wanted to think was just, okay, you, you just did something that you're really happy about and you're not like you're not in your head and you're not thinking about the repercussions of your action you're just kind of enjoying and that's what i wanted and she's like kind of a little bit in love as well yeah yeah um oh it's great i i, I think it's great and celia thinking about that shot but also i'm curious to ask you as, as a filmmaker do you um do you shoot a lot do you do a lot of takes do you do a lot of coverage? Um, I think uh, it, uh, my approach to it has developed uh, uh, throughout the years. And now I, I used to do a lot of take or more takes than I do now. Uh, now I don't, do, don't really do that much. Uh, I try to switch the angle uh, more than getting the, the, the extra take that is perfect number five. Uh, so usually it's just rehearsing beforehand rehearsing a bit on set and then just going for it and if it's semi there i'm i'm getting more comfortable with continuing and switching the the angle and the frame and and you know continuing like that so instead of just like uh for it, I'm a bit like, I don't want to feel too repetitive for uh, the actors and, you know, so trying to keep it a bit organic is important. Yeah, that, that's exactly, that's a good word because I there's always, um, it's a very slight sort of handheld feeling, um, not very jagged, but even when there's a, a, a still moment, there's a very slight, um, yeah, handheld quality. Is that important, you know, also for the actors, for the freedom that it gives them to try things, um, have the have the camera right there? It's super important. And it's what me and uh, my DOP were like, talk we talked, had like long discussions about how we could um, be as organic as possible to serve them, like to be able for for us to follow them in instead of making them you know the too much of slaves towards because it's so so personal the story it's just like their relations and uh they should be able to somehow i don't know control the space so um organic was also a word uh that was uh, used a lot along with raw and, <laughs> and all kinds of other nice cozy words Katla, can you talk about the difference between you know your your career as a stage actress and this, where there are a couple scenes where you do um, express yourself. These are a great dancing sequence uh, <laughs> in the film, uh, but there's also a lot of quiet moments for for you here. Um, what, what what is the difference for you? I mean, it, it, having to internalize uh -huh. so much of of her versus what it's like to portray someone on the stage yeah uh i re really like to do this the subtle way like you do in the in movie in movies uh like uh, i work a lot on the big stage in the city theater so there's a lot of expression going on and uh, that's of course very nice to do but uh, when you uh, when you're working in a movie you just um, I think it's very exciting to just uh, uh, tell a story with your eyes and and try to just feel the way it is. You know what I mean? Um, so it's delicate, and I like this delicate work. I really like it. Very good. Mm. There's it's a also, sorry, can, uh, yeah. can absolutely because Katla is a musician as well, and she has done a lot of comedy. So. 
like her timing is uh, something that's like she has a, a like a, an amazing uh, relationship to timing and uh, subtleties and i think it's also like your because of your music um, background and what you do is in, in um, and music that makes you also extra i don't know time a uh, timing genius <laughs> wow <laughs> you think about that <laughs> is there a relationship between music and and um comedy well yeah probably in a way i mean uh, there's this like Celia says this timing it's necessary <laughs> to have a good timing. Uh, and sometimes you do and sometimes not. I mean, yeah, I don't know what to add to it more. Well, let me ask about one of the things that's that's really great about the film, which is that um, uh, Agnes uh, is from the Philippines originally, I think, if I can get that, and she's been adopted it is not a movie about this. It's not an issue film. I mean, I, I, I don't even know if I'm right about that. I think that it's, I think I remember that being a, a point in the film somewhere. But um, I, maybe I can ask all three of you to, to talk about bringing that in, not as the, you know, big dramatic crux, but as just sort of a fact of life. I mean, they are mother and daughter, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that, I feel like Celia, you must have included that for for some reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, but also, I mean, maybe the the, the most simple, obvious reason is um, also the fact that it is a mother daughter story, uh, and they they are as close as a mother daughter can be with all that kind of. Uh, uh, you know disappointments and and everything they're like and they're what they're facing their problem is not uh related to blood it's it's communication right so uh making them not like uh, from the same dna kind of made that clearer that uh what we do have in problems with our like in our family it's usually uh how we talk and or not talk and how we act and not act and not from the blood that we share. Mm -hmm. But Donna, I don't know, maybe you want to add something. Do you, I mean, did, did, yeah, you, um, did you discuss it at all or was it just sort of like... I think, no. yeah, I mean, what Celia is saying, I really, I really like the fact that even though that she is adopted, that wasn't the main, like, we, that wasn't the main focus. Because as Celia says, the problem wasn't the fact that um, Ragnar, yeah, the mother wasn't like her real biological mother. The problem was with communication and the fact that they're saying or not saying things that they should be saying. So I really liked that, yeah, the focus wasn't on the fact that she was adopted. It was just a struggle because like the family in the household didn't know how to communicate, which is probably something that everyone can relate to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I wanted to bring up, uh, just bring up, have you mentioned two other people in the film that are really good? Uh, the, um, the actress, Tell us the name of the actress who plays the the grandmother, um, because she uh, brings a lot of um, energy to, to, to this film. Mm -hmm. Anna Christine is her name. Yeah, I really liked how yeah she really set the tone for the relationship between the grandmother and the mother, and mm -hmm. like you can see why the mother was so had this intense need of. Like controlling her daughter and being overbearing, as as mm -hmm. Katla said, it's something that runs through the family. Mm. Yeah, right. Yeah. And uh, also the fact that it's somehow, I mean, uh, these forms of communications are contagious, and we bring to our kids uh, our own anxieties and our own troubles somehow, unless we mm -hmm. uh, take them honestly up and you know f face up to them somehow. Uh, and which is totally, I think, the case with the 
these three generations. I mean, she, uh, Ranve is totally bringing on to, to her daughter what she has been dealing with in her mother's like relationship. Mm-hmm. And, and it's just, I like to think about like um, what happens after this film for the relationship is probably like there are better times I had in, form, in terms with communication um, and come to terms with, uh, with uh, you know, each other in their own kind of on their own terms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also, I, I wanted to just also, um, if we could mention the name of the uh, the really sweet young man who plays um, Agnes's friend, um, the, the actor. Yeah, Kristen yeah. on there. It's a it's a really nice. I mean, I think that's a that's one of the elements about a coming of age story that I I, I love that this that this film includes, um, which is you know he he also is, is quite affected <laughs> by um, the behavior of other characters in, in the movie. D- Donna, uh, do you want to just talk about working with him? Uh, I've I've known Kristen uh, yeah kid for some time. Um, and I, I really love him. He's so talented, and that his character is kind of the only like person in the movie who who he's, he's like on the outside looking in. So when uh, Shade, the actor, this wash up actor, comes into the household and everyone is in awe of him in some way, and you have this scene where they're all in the house singing, and he is the only <laughs> he's the only person that sees Shade for. What he truly is, and I think that was that was a lot of fun. You can see like the the mother and the father and Agnes were all sh- singing, enjoying while he was like, "This dynamic is kind of this, this is weird, you guys." So that right. was that was a lot of fun, and yeah. Um. So, can we talk about the the uh, the town um Ak- that correctly. Akranis. Um, Julia, tell me about yeah, the decision. Akranis. To, Akranis. The, the the decision, Celia, to to set the film there. Um, this this uh this sort of um, small uh pretty small sea seaport town. Um, I think uh, first and foremost, it is um. Ranve is in a place where she's quite lonely, right? So she's uh, like, and this, uh, her small town is, uh, is just mirroring that somehow. It's very, she is very close to a lot of people, but not like, but still extremely lonely. So alone, but still, you know, in a, in a small society. Um, what is, um, it's also, it has a, has this element of being able to uh, be very close to what we call the city. So you can actually look over and see the city, uh, but still it's very far away. So it was kind of mirroring the fact that uh, a life that's a bit better or bigger or richer somehow is very close to you, but uh, you are yourself somehow um, the obstacle towards, you know, joining it. So. It's always, you know, you see this, uh, what you think is a better life, uh, but you don't really have the courage to join it somehow. So that was kind of what we were going for with with that small town being so close to to our city, was being very close, but still very far away. Yes, you can actually see the the lights on the horizon at night. Um, Donna, one of the... uh, aspects of your character is that she is uh well she says she's going to do crossfit but she's also learning um how to pole dance um now i i mean i don't know i've never attempted anything like that but what what was it because you have to actually do it in the film uh in a in sort of a you're practicing it does it really hurt Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it, it, it did. It did actually hurt <laughs> the scene where I was on the pole. Um, we did that a couple of times. I think it was around 15, 20 times. 
And I, because I, I didn't know this, but your skin is the only thing holding you up on the pole. Ooh. And you have to, like the pole and you have to, you have to, you kind of have to, yeah, your skin is the only thing that's holding you up. And we did a couple of takes and I had like minor bruises, but I didn't know it, it would be that difficult. Yeah. But it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And I actually kept uh, on going uh, to pole fitness a couple of weeks after we uh, like stopped filming because it was a lot of fun. And also, I mean, you have to be very strong. It's it's really like yeah. it's straining on the muscles. You have to like, you hold yourself up there. So it's super, it's really not as easy as the animated look. It's very hard. And me for like what I said before, about <laughs> being, uh, not, not many takes. I did a lot of takes on that one. I'm sorry about that, Donna, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> okay. But yeah, That's I mean, I recommend it. pole fitness. It's a lot of fun. You have to be like very, uh, how do you say, it? limber because you have to you have to be very elegant. So, and I tried to be elegant, and and at, at some takes it, it was successful. Hopefully. Um, I wanted to also ask um, Katla, sort of what uh, playing off what um, Celia was mentioning about the future for these characters. Mm -hmm. um, and I won't give away the um, last shot of the movie, but it's a, it's, a, it's a beauty and it kind of does make us think about what's coming up next um, or the, the potential for what could be next. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about that as, uh, as an actor? Uh, how, how much do you think about the road ahead for the, you know, in terms of the characters you play? Well, honestly, I don't think about that a lot. I mean, of course, in this story, uh, what happens, I'm not going to say too much, uh, we can say a scandal. Uh, it surely changes everything. And uh, I think, and I thought while we were uh, shooting the film that what happens to them, it's a blessing in a way. Uh, they are maybe not confronting in a healthy way, but uh, their life is going to change from now. So uh, I agree. The last scene, it's re really good and tells a lot. Uh, the last two scenes, when you see Einar, her husband, what he is doing outside the house, and then uh, Randi at the end, uh, and you can see there is, there is a light in the dark. Yes. Mm. Um, and there's a there's just the 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 beauty of the of the open sea um, mm. as well. Uh, I makes me want to ask Celia about the locations that you know. The, a lot of the film takes place in homes, um, and in also in, in a factory. Um, these are all. I, I'm assuming these are all real locations that you used. Yeah. And the the uh, the home that um, we see with that beautiful window that looks out onto the ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about that house. Um, all these elements are somehow connected to the fact that uh, Runway is in a place where she she somehow uh, is passive in like she is in the factory mm. which is kind of uh work that she didn't really want but was put on her somehow she's in the house and the house is like the the science in, uh, in the house is almost screaming i was when we were thinking a lot about the sounds like she she hears the ocean and she hears the like it's uh, claustrophobic almost so um her connection to her environment throughout the film was kind of, uh, you know, related to what she was hearing and almost if, as if she was suffocating somehow. Um, but in the last shot of the film, she's, it, it's more of a, uh, I think, uh, a feeling of peace and the future and peace and coming somehow, like sitting with herself and feeling more okay about it um we were you know uh, 
we were looking for this specific house for I don't know how much it was the, like the most uh, difficult location to find because it was like had to be a bit specific um, and we ended up not finding it in uh, Akanas but actually in Reykjavik and it's just like uh, well. <laughs> just in, uh, in two I think three minutes away from my house in in, in the city. <laughs> So it was on the the wrong side of the ocean somehow, but uh, it worked uh, because it's, yeah, you know, the ocean is the same. I, I don't think I, I I didn't know I I didn't I didn't spot that. Um, so we have some audience questions, but before we go to them, I just wanted to bring up that the film premiered um, at the Busan Film Festival in 2019, pre pre COVID. So you actually got to have a real. Festival premiere. I mean, there's still are festivals, but they're so much virtual. But the reason why we're talking now uh, is because it's it's Iceland's selection for um, the best international film category at the at the Oscars. Maybe if you all three, you could just mention one or two thoughts about that um, about that selection and how you feel. Well, we are so happy. You know, it's unbelievable and. Uh... And we are just, uh, I can speak for all of us, that we are very thankful. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good opportunity for the film. Yeah, they are very proud and it's, it's really, it's actually just really amazing. I never thought that our, our little movie could even get this far. So I'm very, I'm very proud. Yeah, it's been an, uh, it's been an adventure, uh, uh, this, somehow this journey with this film has been totally uh, uh yeah an experience uh i've been thinking quite a lot since uh we had this uh but also it's for now we live in a somehow uh very changed uh, environment now than we did a year ago and i think that somehow uh what runway is dealing with uh like her close relations uh, in her own, like fighting that battle in her own living room is something that we we all are some forced to, to do also for the last year. So it's been quite, um, yeah, it's maybe, um, yeah, a bit more current than I, I, I knew it would be. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's certainly true. And, and I know that, that Iceland has been um, way ahead of a lot of other countries, including the country I'm in, in the U.S., in terms of women in uh, in leadership, and I I love the idea that that the selection is a film so much about complex female characters. Mm. Um, what a what a great way to uh, to um, represent. Um, all right, so if we let's see if um, uh, one of the questions. Um, was there anything personal that you walked away from the film with? And uh, what um, stuck with you after working on it? Hmm. Um, if I can start, I, the first thing that comes to mind is maybe uh, my own thoughts about, uh, uh, you know, what was like the most, yeah, it was somehow a, a battle, I know it's not a battle, but um, the, the character of, of the, the, the neighbor that comes by and somehow is like you said, uh, is, a, is a, somehow a trigger. Uh, I have very co uh, like complex uh, feelings towards him and I thought it was so exciting to explore that somehow. Uh, during like the first phase of the writing period, uh, I we all made them out to be a bit more of a villain and then we, we kind of grew up with him a bit and uh, it was a journey of uh, come to terms with that we all are kind of, you know, um, also douchebags, but, uh, uh, you know, we are a lot of things. <laughs> uh, and I, I, yeah, so I was somehow, that stuck with me a bit after the shoot. It's like also working with him, the different relationship the women had with him and how he is a vehicle to serve their journey somehow uh, so that was like him as a vehicle uh, was uh, was an important thing I think mm -hmm. um, question what was the most unpredictable thing that happened while you were filming 
Mm. Well, um, wow. my leather pants ripped on that <laughs> one scene. So that was something that I did not see coming. <laughs> they ripped on the pole, and, right? On the pole? Yeah, they ripped on the pole, yeah. <laughs> they ripped and it was the only leather pants that we had, so we kind of... <laughs> make do. <laughs> yeah, we had to make do. We had black tape too. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. That, that was a, a, a little unpredictable. Uh, but um, I don't know if there were like any negative unpredictables that happened on set. Don't don't think well, that, so. That that suggests yeah. how how much the the pole tears at the skin uh, if if it's going to rip leather pants. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it wasn't much like the pole's fault, but it was like, like I, I did this dance where like I popped down and opened my legs and that's when the leather pants popped open. <laughs> yeah, it's so that was quite funny. <laughs> uh, one last Just question. a shame because it was a really good pants. Yeah, <laughs> so you what you, you use duct tape to uh to fix them? Yeah. A, a, a temporary like, fix. Yeah, but it was okay. I don't think it was. I don't think you can see it in the movie. I don't think. But if if you guys do watch the movie, which I hope that you do, and you keep an eye on the ripped <laughs> leather pants. <laughs> um, and there's uh, Claudia Blair asks. Um, Maybe Celia, you can talk more about what you were saying a little bit earlier. It's a very good point nowadays. How did the COVID um, pandemic affect the distribution um, and screening? And also, maybe you can also, when you finish telling us that, tell us how things are in Iceland, um, just to give us a, an update there. Mm -hmm. uh, Distribution-wise, I'm not sure it has like. Uh, a huge impact. I mean, everything is viral and, and, and doable somehow. Uh, but for the COVID in, in effect in Iceland, we have actually been quite blessed with uh, uh, being an island and being, you know, uh, being blessed with, uh, I think, responsible people that are dealing with it on our behalf. Uh, we've been quite lucky. And now we are in a in a great place we just have to be careful so uh the business is is quite you know it's it's blossoming now i think uh you know we are doing some we have shoots that are going on and that are going well and people are being careful and we are most of us uh, in this business able to continue shooting and working so that's amazing um i know that's not the case uh in a lot of places mm -hmm. So yeah, and, yeah. and uh, I can ask maybe Katla and Donna uh, before we finish. Um, what else uh, are you working on? I mean, are uh, Katla are, are are theaters able to open? Yeah, we just started like two weeks ago, so now I'm working every weekend, and then, um, but it has been quite difficult of course and we were trying to uh, we we were uh, we wrote a play a sketch play and we were supposed to have a premiere in uh, 2020 and of course that didn't happen but we tried like four times so <laughs> you know that's just the way it is so hopefully now in two months we will uh, start showing that sketch play but now i am uh, uh, every weekend showing uh play for children oh mm. great and so and audiences are able to um to come into the theater excuse me and uh, you, you can show it in front of audiences yes yes in Do front I... of audiences yes they're of course using masks and just 150 people instead of 520. okay so, yeah but that's okay i mean it's better okay. it's very nice um Donna, do you want to just share what you're what you're up to? Yeah, my life is just pretty mundane these days. I'm actually training for a marathon. Like, really? But I don't think. Yeah, but like I don't think I will. Maybe and maybe in two thousand twenty-two. 
But um, I'm just focusing on school right now and yeah, trying to train for the marathon. I've, a, I've, I've ran like half a marathon. That was pretty, that was pretty difficult. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, that, that's third, well, I, yeah. Uh, how, how many kilometers? I mean, that's... Uh, I think half a marathon is 21 kilometers, 0.1 or 0.4. Is yeah. there one big marathon in, in Iceland every year? Yes. Yeah, it's Re Reykjavíkur Marathon, which happens in August. And uh, yeah, it, we, we didn't have it last year, but um, hopefully we can have it this year. I hope so. Good, good luck with so, that. So yeah, that's what I'm up to, running. <laughs> yeah, thank um, you. We, we, do have, we do have two more questions while we're still here. Why don't we take these these last two questions and then we'll say goodbye. Um, from Ivan, um, ah, to, how was it like to working with the cinematographer? Um, and he mentions a, a, a rainy texture, uh, contrasting the characters searching for their inner light. Celia, do you want to share um, maybe a, a thought about your cinematographer? Definitely. Um, I, we were looking for a, a tone, a very specific tone that was for me pretty hard to put into words. Uh, I did uh, many attempts, uh, but I think we, we just developed our language somehow. Uh, I really, I felt uh, the atmosphere should be like a mundane and uh, like in Iceland, when, when March comes, you're after a lot of dark months, uh, the light is somehow coming back. Uh, the days are getting longer, but uh, I kind of hate it because uh, the light coming back is very harsh and it shows how much, like how dirty everything is after the winter, like this, the snow goes away and the light comes in and it's really harsh. And I, that was kind of the, the feeling I wanted to have in, uh, you know, the, the reality of, of our characters. I was also like, like the rawness and mundane without but with a, a kind of um, a hint of some kind of romance as well. So it was mm. like, uh, I don't know, it was a lot of elements that we, we talked about and, and we tried to capture somehow. We're in that period now where you have uh, a, a lot of darkness during the, during the day. What, 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 time, what time is your sunset? Actually, the days are now getting longer because our shortage days yeah. in the December. So there's a, I see a difference. Uh, now it's pitch black, but uh, you know, five six we we get the yeah. dark now. Okay, that's that's very civilized. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, one last question from an audience member. Um, to Katla, how did your background in theater help in your acting in in, in the film? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always, uh, I think it's always about yourself. Uh, looking in the mirror and trying to connect to the feelings you're supposed to show. And uh, uh, in the theater, like I said, it's uh, uh, the, the feelings are bigger. You have to uh, fake it a bit more, you know, uh, when there is a big audience in front of you, then there's like no, no subtle text going on. Uh, so, but it helped me, for example, in scenes where I have to be very uh, big, then I have my experience from the theater to help me. Uh, and in other scenes where I have to play it small, I just uh, find out with Celia. Maybe I can ask you before we go about that. Speaking of playing it big, we mentioned it earlier, but there is that scene mm -hmm. where you're alone well, you're 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 mostly alone in your house, and you just go let it all out um, yeah. and uh, dance to a to a really fun pop song. Um, how do you, do you do you uh, prepare for that by just doing it? Yes. No. We we prepared for that. What is the name of the choreographer, Celia, your friend, Thank who you helped us? Yeah. There were a few instructions. You know, it it wasn't. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, intro from my heart. It wasn't like, uh, you know, I, I had some help with that, but you know, she's just had two glasses of white wine and she's really feeling loose. <laughs> so 
Yeah, and this song, you know, every Icelander know this song. It's uh, nostal nostalgia. Celia, do you yeah. want to add something to it? No, yeah, what is the name of that song? So yeah, this song is uh, this song is like from I think, as I see it always from like her favorite song from when she was a teenager herself. So she goes to that place somehow. Yeah, feeling uh, nostalgic. Um, Sixteen again, and she already she had two bottles of wine. Almost. Oh, okay, two bottles. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and nobody's watching, you know, you can dance in certain ways when nobody's watching. Yeah, and that's actually, it's, it's, that's a great and important uh, point because uh, uh, I think it's beautiful because she is dancing as if no one's watching, but still there is, she is a bit inhibited also, which is, um, I, I mean, I can relate to it as well. It's like, uh, you want to look good. Yeah, there's always some <laughs> element of performative somehow, like you never know. I mean, yeah, I think it's quite yeah. beautiful, like being completely free, but not somehow. Yeah, very, yeah. very human, very human, yes, very human. Um, and we have one more comment that I really want to put on the screen from um, an audience member. Um, Howard Green just wants to comment that the strength of Icelandic women is portrayed wonderfully across um, all three of the main female characters. Mm, nice to hear. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's good to hear. I think it's, uh, I'm happy to hear that, but I think also it's so important and like so exciting to uh, to draw up characters that are, yes, uh, that are strong women, but they are not perfect women and they are human and with all their flaws and imperfections. And I think that's the most uh, exciting part of it somehow for me as i see it is like allowing them to explore all those um you know all those uh character flaws that they have that we all share somehow yes yes um very well said i think that that's that's a that's a, a point that people will be thinking about for a, a long time after the film ends um and so i wanted to end by congratulating everyone of course on the on the collection on, on the film Wishing you all good luck with with theater, with marathons, um, with future endeavors. <laughs> I'll, be looking, I'll be looking for all of your names. Um, you know, really for for many years to to see what else you're, you're up to. Um, and thank you really so much uh, for joining us today to talk about this movie. Thank, thank you. you too. Thank you, Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Um, and be sure to take advantage of our free trial to Rap Pro and be the first to know about upcoming rap screenings and events. And you can also register for upcoming screenings and watch any past screenings that you may have missed by visiting therap.com and going to the screenings tab in the main page. Thank you.